Hello, good evening. Welcome everyone to our second sessions of virtual campus visits. Today we will be talking to our two students and uh, head of residential and EL teacher, Mr. Peter Rechkowski. Hello, Peter. Hello, thank you for having me. And uh, two students, Ingrid, uh, we call it her Ingrid, her uh, name in Chinese is Yang Zhang. She's a student of year three. Hello, Ingrid. Hi. And Ramsey Hickman, who is a Slovak uh, student uh, in year two. Hello, Ramsey. Hello. Um, you can ask us your questions via Slido link, which you can find on our website, yeah. or you can uh, also ask question on the Facebook or Instagram, if you wish. So my first question will be for Peter Retkowski. So tell us, uh, what does it actually mean boarding school? Because some students may not know, it's not very common in Slovakia. Uh, the, the whole concept of boarding schools is um, quite, quite uh, unknown here. And the, the main purpose of boarding is to have people uh, share uh, a space and, and, and uh, share the community, not just during class time, but also in the evening. So, so boarding basically means that students go to school and then in the evenings they stay in the dorms, in the dormitory, in a residence. Um, and the, 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 entire, uh, the entire concept has uh, centuries-long tradition in, in the world. And the ad main advantages are uh, the fact that people can get to know each other much better. People can create relationships that, that last either between students or between what we call staffity, which means you know, staff, teachers, etc. cetera. Um, and then they're able to more effectively help each other. Um, they're able to see areas where they can cooperate, they can see their strengths, which they can play to. And so it's much easier than to create meaningful projects and uh, and to help each other grow. Um, and, and we really like that concept. That's why we, uh, we have decided for Leaf Academy to actually be, be a boarding school. Super, thank you very much. Interesting. Um, now I would like to ask uh, Ingrid. Uh, she's, she came from China. Um, did you ever have any um, experience with boarding, Ingrid? Uh, so my previous school, which is also an international school, is also a boarding school, but boarding is optional in my previous school. Uh, so I uh, stayed in stayed on campus for the first year and then for the second year I was uh, renting an apartment near school. So here in Leaf, it is my first time ever um, staying in uh, an on-campus residence 24-7. Thank you. And what about you, Ramzi? Can you tell us uh, about you? Well, since I'm in year two, I've got experience with, with boarding since from last year. But before before leave, no, personally, I never really had any experience with boarding schools. But so far, it's been so far, it's been great. So was it hard for you because uh, you live probably close by to the residents? Uh, was it hard for you to be away from parents for the first time? Mm, well, uh, first year maybe part of it was was a bit strange because you know I live uh, what five seven kilometers away from our campus, and it was a bit strange that I couldn't go home. Well, I could go home, but the lack of time sometimes prevented that. So yes, it was a bit strange, and it took a bit of time to get used to. But after I did, it's it's really been all right, and I've even visited home multiple times. And whenever I have time, I can just get on a bus, bicycle, anything, and to go see my family for a little while. Mm -hmm. So basically the boarding uh, is compulsory in our school. Uh, so we just need to uh, express that. So everybody, even though you live uh, in the same town, you still have to board obviously in, in, in our boarding house. Um, Peter, question for you now. Uh, could you tell us uh, more about the residents, uh, how many staffs and how many students uh, live in the residence? So our residence is uh, located in one of the one of the hotels in Bratislava. Uh, we have uh, two and a half floors, which we, which we are renting. And so um, we have uh, quite a lot of privacy. We have controlled access. 
um, to those floors so nobody nobody outside of, of Leaf Academy uh, students and faculty can actually can actually access those. Um, we have 110 students currently in the residence. Uh, well, before Corona, that is. Right now, everybody is at home. Mm. And, uh, and 20 faculty members who live in the residence as well. So this allows us to, to, to interact and, uh, and allows us to always have <clears throat> a couple of, a couple of uh, people, a couple of Leave Academy employees who are, who are on duty at any given moment, so that in case uh, something comes up, there's always somebody that you can turn to, there's always somebody you can approach to help you out or, or, uh, or give you a piece of advice. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, so, uh, can I ask you, uh, Ramzi, uh, how often can you go home? That's also a question from the Slido, from our well, uh, audience. Uh, well, it varies. Um, uh, it depends on other workload that we have in school. Um, usually classes end at around four, maybe sometimes even five if you have clubs. But so, so technically, if you're a year, year one or a new year three, your study hours, based, you have this thing called study hours, which is a period of time during which you should just focus on your studies. And you shouldn't leave campus unless you have valid reasons. And it's a really helpful time where we actually focus on work and, and it's efficient, etc. So any time between study hours and the end of school, we can, if I have time and I have, if I have no work to be done, basically any any time I want. Or I could ask my my advisors, which are these two faculty members that take care of students. Uh, for leave, I have to submit a whole request and my, give my reasons why I want to go, and I can leave for any given period of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, we have another questions here. Uh, Ingrid, could you tell us, um, can you choose your roommate? Well, we can. Uh, I can't say that we completely can because uh, before you come to school, you will uh, receive a survey, which basically asks you whether um, you would uh, you like to have your windows open when you sleep or whether you like to play loud music at night, these type of questions. And then the school will try to match you with the best possible solutions. Um, but you can't really directly pick the person unless both of you agree that you would want to share a room then there is this possibility a large possibility that you will end up with that person but if you don't have any person on your mind then the school will still match you with you i would say like the perfect person who would want who you would live with mm -hmm. okay uh, thank you. Thank you, Ingrid. Uh, I still want to remind uh, our um, friends who are watching us uh, that they can ask us questions. Please don't be shy. Uh, go to Slido. Code is hashtag leave. Uh, you can also ask your questions on a Facebook uh, or Instagram. So please go for it. Uh, we have some more questions here. There is a question from one... Um, viewer is there a room cleaning service <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, I can I can take that one and maybe I can elaborate on it as well a little bit uh, we do live in a hotel uh, which means that certain basic services are are provided by, by the hotel so uh, let's say your towels your bed sheets uh, things like that they get laundered centrally um, your trash gets taken out um, so that's that's the level of 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 the the care that's provided for you. However, we we do believe that people need to um, have a little bit of responsibility for their own spaces, and so we ask our students to clean their own rooms, um, to to take care of the common spaces, for example. Um, and so, so it's not like somebody is going to come and is going to clean your room for you, clean your stuff for you. Uh, you need to do that yourself. Um, obviously, there are certain certain hygiene standards which we need to keep, which means that the hotel will take care of the bathrooms, for example, and, and, and toilets and things like that. Um, 
Now, maybe maybe this is not a bad bad point where I can maybe elaborate a little bit on, on the setup um, that we have. And I didn't mention that we uh, do have two and a half floors, which we use. Now, um, we are divided into five halls. Um, and each, each of those halls uh, has 20 to 24 students and a staff faculty member who lives with them in a, in a separate apartment on that, on that given floor. Uh, the arrangement is what we call a two plus two, which means always two and two students uh, inhabit a unit. And that unit consists of two rooms. So you have two people in one room, two people in another room, and they share a bathroom, a toilet, um, and, uh, and a fridge. There is a, there is a kitchen on, the, on each hall, so that kitchen is shared by those 20 to 24 people. Um, there, is a, there is a laundry room on each hall. There is a common room. It's a, it's a special apartment where everybody from that hall can hang out, um, chill a little bit, uh, I don't know, have a, have a call if they need to. I uh, use it to study if you prefer. So it's a space that people can 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 design based on how they how they prefer it. And uh, and the holes are divided uh, on on the basis of gender. So we have two male holes, two female holes, and one mixed hole. Uh, so in case you prefer, then you can uh, you can apply to go to the mixed hole. I do have to say that the that the demand does. Uh, does exceed the supply there, so we cannot uh, we cannot put everybody there who would like to, but we try to uh, make it happen for as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. On that note, when we're talking about the halls and and what facilities are there, there is a question um, somebody is asking us if there is possibility to cook as well. In there the is. Cemetery. There is. Yeah, our students get get five meals per day provided. Um, so breakfast, uh, lunch, dinner, and two snacks in between. There is also what we call a second dinner, uh, which is uh, a snack that, that's available uh, sort of later at night if somebody's studying and just feels hungry. Um, but in, in addition to that, if you, if you want to cook, yes, there is a kitchen. Um, it's equipped with a hot plate. There's a microwave. There's an oven. Um, and holes have budgets. So if they feel like it, they can buy a rice cooker or, or a toaster if you feel like uh, so, so all of that, all of that exists. There's also um, there are also kettles, electric kettles, if you want to make tea or something like that. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. um, so, Ingrid, can you tell us? Have you ever cooked there some uh, good Asian food for whole 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 corridor, <laughs> all the dormitory? Well, not so much um, of the Asian food because I was still trying to, you know, explore the, the Slovak food here uh, mm -hmm. of the few months that we were able to stay with each other together. Uh, but if we go back to school in February as planned, then um, the first Monday of uh, uh, the first Monday that we all come back is actually uh, the Latin festival in uh, China. Which, which is to celebrate the end of uh, Lunar New Year. And I was planning on um, to cook some rice balls for, for people who come back, but hopefully that will come true. It's a really delicious dish and really um, authentic. Okay, super, thank you. Okay, moving a little bit uh, away from food, um, uh, we would like to tell our audience that uh, our boarding uh, school is actually in Bratislava, in Slovakia. And uh, the question is, how far is the residence from the school and how safe is in Bratislava to, to walk around? Um, maybe I can answer that one. Uh, yeah. the the school is actually about a 20 minute walk away from from the campus uh there's also a direct bus link that will get you there in about nine to ten minutes um safe um i think bratislava is, is a quite safe city there's not not much that goes on around here <laughs> no 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 there's not that much that goes around here in like the violent sense uh, i'd say um, I've never had an experience or anyone that I really know with, with, with such with something that was really unsafe. So I'd say, yes, it, it is a safe city and uh, the campus is quite close to the school. Mm -hmm. I, may, I may add on it. If, uh, sure, sure. 
Go just to, to, to the options that Ramsey mentioned, uh, quite a lot of students prefer to take a bike. Um, there's a bike room in the residence where you can store your uh, your devices, and uh, and there are bike racks at school. So a bike takes maybe six seven minutes if you if you're really in a hurry. So that's another option. And I, I just reiterate what Ramsey said uh, to me. Bratislava is one of the safest cities that I've ever lived in. So um, mm -hmm. yes, very right. Yes. We, we can confirm that, yes. Okay, well, I'm just looking in the slider if we have any other questions related to the live in Bratislava. Ah, there is another question. This one is particular for Ingrid. Uh, again, uh, how do you find living in Slovakia, Ingrid? What is the biggest cultural difference between life in China and Slovakia? So living in here is a teeny bit different because uh, I'm from Shanghai and it, it, it it's a gigantic city. It's 30 times bigger than Bratislava. Wow. Uh, and also five times more uh, in population. So uh, living here, it's like this cozy feeling that, you know, you are not so busy. Most of the time you're super chill. Same with all of the people around, but you still get to be uh, in the city center. So that's the feeling for me so far. And the biggest cultural difference, I would say, is that um, uh, people here are super friendly. So they are very polite. And every time uh, I have any problems, there will always be people helping me. Uh, and even though sometimes uh, you might, I might encounter some situation where uh, like the people are not so good at uh, speaking English, but um, they will try their best to help me. So yes, that's probably the biggest cultural differences. Super. And, and going a little bit back to the food uh, discussion we had. So what is your favorite? Because you said that you like Slovak uh, food. So what is your favorite Slovak food then? <laughs> well, I haven't tried that many and many of them I can't even pronounce the name but like the classic everyone will everyone will ask you if you have tried it is the hulushki if I even pronounce it right so it's like this tiny dumpling with goat cheese and bacon it almost bacon like stuff on the top and it's really really good I mean if you are a cheese person then it's really good I am a cheese person so I remember when I first time met you, uh, when you came uh, in August to, to Bratislava, we went to a local restaurant for lunch and you said, I will have a schnitzel. So you straight away <laughs> went for a schnitzel and said, I like it. <laughs> so that, that for me. Well, but I'm not so sure if that one is even, uh, it is completely Slovak food because I have it uh, in other like European countries as well. So um that one, uh, yeah. true. And also this snack, uh, this uh, drink, Kofola. It's really, really good. <laughs> oh, you like, like that, Kofola. It's like the herbal version of cola. And it's also, I think it's also healthier. So that was that. that is also my favorite. Is it really? I don't know. It's probably lots of sugar there as well, no? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's healthier than cola. And I also read, on, uh, read online that Slovak people would literally choose uh, Kofola over uh, any alcohol, like for adults. Mm -hmm. Super, thank you for that. Um, I can see another question in our Slido. Um, I will slightly uh, add to that question as well. I, I think that will be for Peter to answer, if I may. Um, the question is, what is international mix uh, in, in residence? But I know, Peter, that you are quite traveled man. Um, from the past, uh, uh, and I would like to ask you that because there is many obviously nationalities in in uh, in a campus in a, in a residence. How do you find it to adjust to different cultures, or you know, is it easy for you, or do you still learn, or is it some always something new for you? Uh, thank you. So I'll probably answer those uh, those two questions sort of in in sequence. Um, the the international mixture here. I think I was counting it the other day. Uh, I think it's around around fifteen different different nationalities that we have here. Um, obviously, Central Europe has the the, the greatest uh, the greatest number uh, with Slovaks, Czechs, Poles, uh, and uh, 
usually also Hungarians, uh, Ukrainians, for example, quite a lot of them. But then, but then even outside of Central Europe, we have people from Russia, from from Germany, from the U.S., from China, um, from uh, people with uh, who were born in, in the U.K. in in France, uh, people from Peru, uh, from um, from South Africa, for example, from Bulgaria, from Serbia, uh, from from Vietnam, from Afghanistan, from Iran. Um, and so, and so the mixture is quite, quite rich and, and a lot of people who are perhaps, perhaps Slovaks, they have studied or have lived, um, abroad. So we have a colleague who, who spent uh, quite a lot of time in Thailand, for example, we have, uh, a bunch of people who, who spent some time in the US and the UK. Uh, I lived in Colombia and in South Africa for, for, for some time, um, also in the US. So. So, so the international spirit there uh, is 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 definitely present. Uh, how I find how I find the the cultural adjustments to me is always about about listening and watching more than more than uh, talking at first, because we all come to a different place with a lot of assumptions which we might not even be aware of because they're natural to us, because that's how we function, that's how we function all our lives. And, and some of those assumptions might actually be false in a different country. And so, so for me, the first thing I always do when I come to a different place is just, just to watch and, 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 and listen to how people speak, what they say, well, how people behave and what situations. And that gives me cues of, of which of my assumptions might be correct and where I need to be careful because maybe how I would react might be misunderstood. Or maybe how others react, I might misunderstand. That helps me to be a little sensitive, and then I ask a lot as well. Uh, am I, you know, is this, this is this how it works? Is that how it works? Um, and then I, that starts a very nice conversation and, and sharing of, okay, my culture does it this way, your culture does it that way, and that's interesting. And, and why do we do it differently? And um, and it can paint a very nice picture of, of of all kinds of ways how we can do things as as humans. Mm -hmm. Super. So. But this is good. Uh, yes, it must be really interesting in, environment to live in and, and very inspiring as well. Um, okay, so um, let's move to another different topic and that's after school time. So basically when they have a, when the students have a free time after school, uh, what they can do? Uh, is there any activities planned? Uh, you know, for, for, for the whole period of time, for weekends or afternoon. Uh, so how much free time you have after school? Uh, mm. So maybe I can, I can ask this one. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, we have a very, very large variety of clubs. Uh, uh, there's clubs of all sorts. There's there's clubs that concern football, uh, I'm sorry, sports, like football, <laughs> basketball, et cetera. Or, or there's art <laughs> <laughs> or there's clubs that concern stuff like art or, or I think there's even a photography club or or basically any club that you can think of uh, is here. And if there isn't, then you have an option, I think, twice a year to create one. Uh, that's that's like after school. And during the weekends, we, we usually have some sorts of activities which are all optional or mostly optional. Uh, that we can participate in. There's stuff like whole competitions where we where we compete for a leaf trophy, uh, which hasn't occurred this year. So we shall see if it happens. Uh, or there's stuff like like grills or just anything, and it's all open to suggestion. We as students do have a certain say in this because faculty usually want to get some some students involved to get their mat uh, opinions on the matter and actually perfect it as much as possible. I myself even participated in organizing a, a, an off-site once. So, so that was interesting. It was an experience and it was, it was, it's, yeah, it's very, it's very interesting. And, and they always managed to make it cool and, and, and engaging, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So obviously you are still, uh, that we, we're now talking about co-curriculum, uh, which is part of the basically education in the LEAF Academy. So basically still after school, there is still some education uh, continuing. So when you talk about clubs, so we have various uh, clubs. So uh, I don't know, do we have any 23 or something possible? Um, so if somebody, for example, is uh, 
is playing volleyball or hockey or football, let's say, or something, they, they play some instruments, so they can still do it after school? Is there any time for, for them to continue what they started in previous school? Yeah, so I can take that one. Um, so after you're done with your with your classes and or clubs, depending on what you have, you basically have have space until um, until 10 p.m. when when everybody needs to be back in, in the residence. Mm -hmm. And how you use that time is up to you. Uh, for the new students, we do have a what we call study hours program where we require you to uh, to be in the residence for two hours to uh, sort of get used to doing your homework. Um, together, etc. But that only takes uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, I think six weeks at the beginning, and then after that, that gets released, and so you have you have more freedom um, uh, for the older students, anyway. And so, uh, a lot of our students actually uh, take their instruments uh, sort of outside of Lee. So they go to a, uh, a music school, or or uh, we have a couple of people who who do professional sports. So one guy does, uh, does professional hockey in, in the highest, highest league, actually. And so he does that after school. Um, another guy does uh, ultimate frisbee. Uh, he also does that after school. Um, we, have a, we have a guy who does nine pin, which is almost like bowling. Um, and so, so there's, a, there's a wide variety of things that Bratislava offers. Uh, and so you can, you can definitely uh, partake in, in whatever that offer. Uh, provides and you find meaningful. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So uh, we were talking about these clubs. Is there um, is there any possibility for external students to join the clubs who are not uh, Leaf Academy students? Yes, I remember last year. Even yeah, last year we had I participated in a talking club and we had multiple external students who who actually participated and got used to engaging with us as students and we introduced the whole basically we talked a lot at that point and they asked any types of questions about leaf academy and they got to know more and it was, it was really engaging and interesting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay um so we were talking about the clubs after school and then some free time saturday sunday so basically can you uh, do you have like free time just for yourself so you don't have to do anything is, is it also possible to just <laughs> relax and not to do much or you can just say let's go somewhere to Czech Republic I mean in a normal circumstances not at the moment but uh, when, when we are not in a corona pandemic yeah Ramsey you can you can say that so oh, 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 okay sorry uh, I thought Pete wanted to start but okay uh, so yes as I already said uh, I mentioned earlier on that we have certain um, uh, absence request forms in which, mm -hmm. which we basically submit them and we give our reasons we want to say where we're staying what we're doing so, so that because we're still uh, LEAF still uh, is responsible for us so being so, so filling out these absence request forms is important because they let us go under normal circumstances nowadays due, due to corona we shouldn't travel much not to be in contact with too many people but Mm, under normal circumstances, if we fill it out, uh, I don't think there should be even there should be any problems. Mm -hmm. even, we can even like our teachers are really, really, um, really cool and re really, really helpful and understanding. So if we tell them ahead that we're actually planning something like this, they can help us out by by giving us either work ahead or or we can do it online or they can just send us assignments to do to keep up to date. Uh, mm -hmm. So yes, it's, it is possible to travel to places. Many people even go home if they live in the Czech Republic and Prague. We have a couple of people who actually did mm -hmm. live in Prague. They, they went there for the weekend on Friday and then they came back on Sunday evening. Oh, fantastic. Maybe, maybe to add to that, um, all of what Ramsey said is uh, that's the case in case you want to you wanna go uh, outside of Bratislava for, for a longer period of time. You know? So you want to spend a weekend out of Bratislava or you want to you want to go to a math camp or a competition for a week, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you want to move within Bratislava, that's completely free and you don't have to uh, even fill out anything. You don't have to um, somehow, there's no bureaucracy around it. Uh, Bratislava is a safe city and we consider the whole of Bratislava our campus. So, uh, you know, when you have time between school and, and, and your clubs and, and, you know, 
any evening activities that you that you may have you can move around you can go get you can go grab coffee you can go to a to a gallery you can you can go you know there's a lot of forests around Bratislava so you can go and uh, and walk in, in nature for 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 half an hour if that if that makes you happy um, you can go for a run so all of that is is completely flexible so uh, maybe maybe to add on that um, even during every day of um, in the middle of our studies we have like an hour break which is the lunch break we get vouchers with which we can go anywhere around Bratislava and um, get our food or coffee or drink whatever we need and then come back to our classes to to continue studying. Wow, cool. That's also good. Um, okay, thank you. I would like to also mention for um, students who are watching us maybe from outside of EU, um, um, maybe very interesting for them to say that from Bratislava to Vienna, for example, I think it's only about 50 minutes on train, so it's easy to get to. Same with the Czech Republic. The position of Bratislava is very interesting. So it's, it's very location is very good because you can get to Czech Republic, which is the nearest biggest city is I think Brno. Uh, so you can jump on a train to get there again, 45 minutes and same in Vienna. So this is also interesting. Budapest is probably well, a couple of hours away, which is the capital city of Hungary for those who, who doesn't are not really familiar with Europe. Central Europe. So, yeah, this is, uh, I would like to stress this out that the position of the school in Bratislava is very good. Um, okay, so going back to uh, residents, we have a question here on a slide. Uh, some uh, viewer is asking Is there a doctor available at the residence? So, we do, have a, <clears throat> we do have a nurse who actually lives in the residence, and her husband is a firefighter. So, we have it sort of doubly covered. Oh. Um, and uh, in case uh, there are some minor minor health issues like a cold or, or a you know, small fever or something like that or cough, then the nurse handles that. Uh, in case of uh, sort of bigger 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 health health concerns, maybe maybe somebody has a high fever or or has been feeling unwell for some time or or simply needs uh, a specialist treatment, um, then uh, basically Bratislava offers uh, the the best best uh, pediatric healthcare and also adult healthcare in the country and we have access to the to to the hospital system here because the public public healthcare system here uh, is is fairly well well developed so our um, our nurse will take people to see a specialist to the hospital if needed uh, in addition to that we also have a contractual gp general practitioner and so if it's something that doesn't require a specialist or a hospital treatment, but is a little more than a nurse uh, feels sort of is, uh, is just like a mild cough, then, then there's also that option and uh, the GP can prescribe meds, et cetera, et cetera. And again, those get covered from the health insurance. So that, that's very convenient. Mm -hmm. uh, we probably can mention that we have a well-being uh, department generally in the school. Uh, if you want to tell us more about that uh, as well. So the well-being department, um, that, that's a second branch of our, of our healthcare. So to speak, what I described before was uh, the care about the body and the well-being department takes care more about the, uh, the mind. And so uh, in case of uh, any mental health concerns, for example, uh, we have a team of three, three colleagues who, uh, who can help, who coordinate, again, can refer people but also they provide provide counseling themselves. So in case somebody's struggling with classes or struggling with some relationships or or other things, uh, mm -hmm. you know, life brings a lot of situations. Um, they are they are available and they are here. Mm -hmm. Super, good to know. Okay, um, so I I would like to go back a little bit to that free time. So I, I had done, uh, one question prepare myself as well to to uh, to ask. Um, so what happened? Okay, you, you have a free time, you go out. What happened when students cross the line, break the rules? What happened then? Would you like to take that one, Ramsey, or should I? <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I can take this one. Basically, if someone crosses the line or breaks any types of rules, we have a whole committee of people, which is consists of students and faculty alike from all years, I believe. Uh, and we 
in in this committee you come there you you if you if you i mean if you cross the line and get caught right uh, <laughs> you discuss what happened or or if you just did something and you feel bad about it you can you can talk about it and this committee basically makes sure or no they they learn if you uh, let me restart the most important thing about about talking to this committee is being honest right if you did something wrong and you're honest about it this committee talks to you and 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 analyzes if you acknowledge your mistake you really mm, i wouldn't say you get let off the hook uh you still there are still some consequences that happen it's just they try to help you mature and grow as much as possible and learn from your mistake uh and yes, there's consequences, but it's always nice being open and, and honest. So because we're a community who, which is which is kind of has friendships between each other, even faculty and students, and it's hurtful and and bad and really immature to to lie for no reason, even if you get caught. Mistakes happen, and it's okay to make them. Just yeah, Pete wants to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, and, th and thank you, Ramsey, for that. And just to just to add, we we believe in um, we'll be a little lot in, in the growth mindset, which means we're trying to take everything that happens within the academy, but also outside, as, as a learning opportunity, and that informs a lot of the things that we do when it comes to the curriculum and, and reporting, but also the residence and discipline. And so we don't. Uh, we're not big fans of a, of a punitive approach of, oh, so, uh, you know, you broke this rule, and so now you have to do uh, this and that to punish you. Um, what, we, what we do prefer is uh, what we call a restorative uh, system, where we try, to, we try to help the person realize who their actions may have hurt, what damage they may have caused, and then what the best ways would be to repair the damage to, to the maximum extent possible. Because exactly as Ramsey said, mistakes happen and they happen to everybody. And, and it doesn't matter if you're a student or if you're, if you're 36 and, and a teacher, mistakes happen. And, and it's often how you react to those mistakes and how you, how you make them, how you repair the damage, that's more important than, than the fact that the mistake actually happened. Um, and... Uh, and that's, in fact, one of the reasons why, why the residence is even here. And it's for us to be able to learn from each other and with each other, not just during class time, as I said at the beginning, but also, also uh, in the evenings and, and in the afternoons. But a lot of that learning is not only academic, but a lot of the learning has to do with values, with, with a way of thinking, with a way of, of considering different perspectives, with a way of of understanding that we are a part of, of a place with other humans there. And so we need to learn how to work together and how to, how to coexist to, to create something meaningful and something that, uh, that, that's nice and that makes sense. Mm, very good. Uh, very nice. Said. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, on that note, I would like to ask Ingrid, if I may. Uh, you're obviously living uh, very far from your family. Um, so you must have a moment sometimes uh, that you really need to talk to someone or you feel sad or you want to share something. And for that moment, you obviously can't speak to your parents. Do you have anybody you go to uh, when, when you feel a little bit you need to speak to someone or how do you deal with it? Yes. So as the international who is still staying here in Bratislava, even though everyone went home, <laughs> Uh, we have check-in with the teachers every night. And that is the time that you can, uh, well, I mean, I can catch up with uh, the teachers. We would have baking sessions arranged. Uh, we would have chit chat just to talk about how life's been. Uh, and also you, you can always contact all of the mm, students here. Like one of the things that I like uh, the most about Leaf Academy is that people bond so closely together. So even though I, I, I see that people are asking what are the, uh, what is the age of the students living in the residence and also in school. So I will answer that as well. 
So even though uh, we have people aging from 14 to 17, 18 years old, um, it feels like a big family, you know? You, it's like a big family with a couple of funny parents, but also lots of lots of siblings. So it's, it's really fun. Um, and so far, I don't have that much homesickness coming. Uh, so it's, it's, it's okay overall. Uh, and I see there's also a couple of questions in the live poll uh, in Slido um, about uh, the language. So do the students study in English or in Slovak? Uh, we study in English. All of our subjects are in English because we are an uh, AP curriculum school. Uh, but for Slovak, and also I believe Czech um, people, they need to study Slovak as a national language. And then for the rest of the internationals, we need to study Slovak as a foreign language. So someone was asking, do you need to know Slovak in order to be able to live in Slovakia during the studies? So I would say uh, you don't really need that. For the first couple of months, you might need the Google Translate all the time, but uh, for, for like your daily life, it's okay. You don't really need to know that much Slovak. And also in Slovak uh, classes, you will be able to learn some of the basic terms in order to survive here. Uh, and lastly, I just want to go back to the health insurance thing. Uh, so someone was asking about health insurance. Does the school provide it or the, school sh uh, the student should arrange it in his country before uh, leaving for school? So for me personally, I got the... Uh, health insurance even back home just because I need to apply for the visa. So that insurance was just for the visa. It's not so much. It's really uh, not an official insurance. Uh, and it's only because I need to apply for a visa in order to stay in Europe for more than um, two months. So uh, after you come here, the school will arrange uh, a health insurance for you. You don't need, to, you just need to for, uh, fill out a form and then the school will take care of everything else. And as far as I know, that health insurance also cover uh, like uh, severe injuries, even uh, beyond Slovakia. So I think it's across uh, EU countries. It's all valid. So that's pretty convenient, I would say. Okay, thank you for all this information. That's very cool. Um, I can see there is another question which we already answered on the slide. Uh, it's actually in Slovak language, but I'll try to translate it. Um, if, if it's compulsory for all students to live uh, live uh, on a campus, even though or the residents, uh, even though they from Bratislava. So the answer is yes, yes, everybody has to live uh, on in a boarding house. Uh, I was going to say unfortunately, but <laughs> <laughs> Peter has something to add. <laughs> yeah, I would say I would say fortunately so. Um, and the reason is that we don't want to make differences between you know people from Bratislava and people from outside, and these people are more together and these people are sort of just attached to the school and just go to classes and then are, are not able to participate in the in the whole life of the of the community in, in the evenings and in the afternoons and that's why we're really happy that we do have the capacity to to offer the residence even to people from Bratislava and and obviously you know if, if you want to have lunch with your parents over the weekend or if you want to go go see them uh, in the evening for half an hour for an hour that's that's always possible so it's uh, you know you're not isolated from them um, but you also get the chance to really bond and and interact and create relationships and friendships and meaningful ones at that with uh, with all the people that do live in the residence. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you for that. Um, okay, I'm just looking at the slide if there is any other question. Are the teachers also friends with students? Are the teachers also friends with students? That's the question from Slido. Um, probably for so, student, no? <laughs> okay. Yeah, then, then I'll add to it probably. Okay, so uh, yes, teachers are definitely friends with students. We are a very friendly environment. It doesn't really matter if you're a, if you're a staff or tier. Well, obviously it matters, but it's uh, in LEAF, I'd say it's a different kind of respect we have for teachers. It's um, 
not that kind of strict like oh miss we call, we all call each other by by our first names except our principal we for some reason we call him Sappho <laughs> but yes we're, we're a very friendly environment we we all have really good relationships I'd say and um and yeah anything you want to add to that Pete um maybe just a little bit of a of a, of a background when we were building Leaf Academy five and a bit almost six years ago one of the main principles that we that we consciously set was that we want our students to be our partners not us being the bosses and the students being there to just do what we tell them but we've always um, considered this place to be a shared space a space that's co-created which is equally the students as it is the faculties where uh, students as well as faculty can have ideas how to make it better can implement ideas how to make it better and and I think that to a large extent uh, also informs the way relationships are created because the respect that we have for each other is not based on some sort of hierarchy um, or, or, or a position but that respect that we have for each other is based more on the fact that we are humans that we have gotten to know each other and that we share a certain certain system of values and and the relationships are, um, I would say, the richest that I have that I have ever experienced at any place that I've worked before. And and to me, they're a combination of of mentorship, um, of being a teacher, being a being a friend, being a, a bit of a parent, being a, being an older older siblings perhaps sibling perhaps. So, so it's a combination of all of this, and um, and I think it does help us uh, do exactly what Leaf Academy is trying to do, and that's put people together. And make sure that uh, that they can they can learn from each other, and uh, and and grow. Maybe one thing I would add to that: there's a there's a certain EL teacher we have, whose uh, favorite quote is "We are all learners here," uh, which is really interesting because yes, we're, we're different generations, and and some of us are more widely part in age than others. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Okay, but uh, so that means we all have different experiences, and since we're an international school, we have different experiences with with um, from different environments and different. Basically, we all grew up in different environments and different ways that we were we were raised, and so even so, yes, it, some things are standard, like like the teachers do teach us some things, like like subjects and etc., and we can. Mm, maybe Staffordy learned some other things about us, like more practical things, or not practical. More like modern and etc. Yes, we all learn from each other, and we all grow together as one community. I'd say, and even even uh, older students with younger students are, aren't afraid to interact, since the halls aren't based on on age, but more your personality, and so. Yes, we even learn from each other as students. It's not really, yes, we have classes as different years, like year four, year three, year two, year one, but together we do live very communal. Is, is that a word, communal life? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Peter, Peter, you want yeah. to add something? Um, and, I, and I like how you, how you describe the, the learning to be a two-way process, that, that we, we, we teach and we learn. Uh, and... Um, and I think the richness of experience definitely, definitely helps there because <clears throat> we can simply bring perspectives that, that other people may, may not have had the opportunity to, to, to get. And so, and so this way, uh, this way we can, we can create a richer, richer environment. And, um, and it, it's, it's amazing how even people with 10, 20 years of teaching, teaching practice can learn a lot from, from students. And it's not just about the class and the subject, but it's also about a, a way of thinking about uh, you know how to how to keep a flexible mind about how to um, how to really look at things from uh, from a perspective which which makes it clear okay what is really important and what is maybe not important um, and um, and especially since we have uh, you know students as Ingrid said you know from 14 to all the way up to 20 or 21 in fact some of our students so even within the student body this transfer transfer works um, works, works really well. So, um, 
Super. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't see any more questions on the slide. Do I? Uh, we have still ten more minutes. Um, maybe we could just ask um, Ingrid. Could you tell us what is the typical day? A weekday, I mean, uh, in a school. So, what time you start in the morning, what time you finish, and what you do between. So, I will just talk about um, pre pandemic <laughs> life. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, so, uh, depends on the classes you pick, you either start at 8 45 in the morning or 9 50 in the morning. Uh, so for me, uh, from all of the classes that I pick, Wednesday and Friday is the happiest day for me because I start at 9.50. Um, and then for each uh, class, it's either uh, 55 minutes or it's more uh, one hour, more than one hour or so. I don't remember the exact time um, time uh, duration because because you know the, the lessons are fun so you forgot how, how time passes. Sure. <laughs> so yes and then um, every day at uh, 11 25 or so you will get to have lunch and as Renzi mentioned earlier you get to have lunch anywhere you want uh, the school will provide uh, some food uh, food card credits or vouchers so you can buy your own lunch and mm -hmm. then uh for the afternoon cl afternoon classes depends on what uh classes you pick you will tip normally you will end at 3 25 uh on certain days you might end at 4 30 and then you get to you get to uh do some extracurricular activities do some clubs um and also in between all of those uh, classes, sometimes you might have free period. Uh, that will happen because you didn't choose certain classes, which is uh, possible because you don't need to fill your schedule fully uh, entirely. So you might have um, a free uh, period. And for those period, you are uh, free to go somewhere else uh, most of us would prefer to either uh, self-study in the garden in school or uh, some of us will go to coffee houses uh, to, to, to study. Um, and then uh, from uh, after school to uh, five or so, it's all free time for you. You will either go to club uh, or uh, you can do whatever that you plan for yourself. And then you will have dinner. Um, and then it's the study hour that we mentioned earlier. It differ from each grade. So depends on each grade you are in, uh, each year you are in, you have, uh, well, basically the older you are, the more free time you will have. Uh, and then every, from Monday to Friday, uh, you will have a check-in at 10. Um, after 10, you wouldn't be able to leave your uh, your room, uh, your uh, our residence unless you have a special reason uh, that's that's because you uh, the school wants to make sure we are all safe and we are all here uh, but on Friday and Saturday uh, the check-in is a bit later so if you want to go out and meet friends uh, you can obviously do that so that's like a typical day at least Fantastic, super. So now everybody can see who is watching us, uh, how full day can be uh, during week, obviously. So um, meanwhile, we got another question, but while I've got you Ingrid here, so uh, that's a little bit related um, to that question. So they're asking um, if how many holiday breaks are during year and um, can students stay in residence during them? and who will take care of it. We know that Ingrid uh, stayed in a residence basically over Christmas as well at <laughs> this time because it's a very uh, a special time at the moment, very strange times uh, during the pandemic. So um, I don't know if uh, Peter, you want to um, answer this question and then uh, Ingrid can say about her experience during Christmas. Thank you. So we have, uh, we have a several breaks during the year um, there is a week at the uh, at the end of october then there are roughly two to three weeks um, 
at the end of December, beginning of January. Um, there is then one week in the middle of February. Uh, then there is one week uh, around Easter, whenever that happens to be. And then there is one week uh, in May as well. So um, you get basically six, six to seven weeks uh, distributed into five holiday blocks uh, per year which is quite important to, for people to recover and reconnect with, uh, with, their, with their places back home, et cetera, et cetera. And that's also a reason why uh, we generally do not uh, uh, have the residents open during the breaks. Uh, the residence closes down and so everybody goes home uh, to reconnect, um, but also uh, to somehow switch the environment a little bit. Because if you're in the same space for the whole year, it may become a little boring, but also, also um, sort of less uh, less inspiring, and so for international for international students for whom it might not be very practical to travel, you know, home to to Vietnam or to China for a week and then back. Uh, what happens is uh, is that Leaf supports uh, they're staying at a at an apartment here in Bratislava somewhere, maybe an Airbnb, maybe a host family, or or some kind of other arrangement. Also depends on what the parents are comfortable with, and um, and so and so people. Uh, then get to at least spend a week in a, in a slightly different space or maybe get to know uh, another family, a couple more people. Um, some people choose to travel. So we've had international students who took uh, a week to travel around uh, Central Europe and not just Central Europe, even beyond that. So, so there's really quite a lot of, quite a lot of options what, what people can do. Mm -hmm. Super. Well, uh, we are coming to the end. We've got three more minutes uh, because we usually do these sessions in one hour. Is there anything else you would like to share with our audience, with our viewers, um, Peter, Ingrid, or Ramsey? Um, for me, one thing that I do need to say uh, is that uh, when we were listing all the nationalities we did forget about people whose families come from iraq of course if i didn't say that then somebody would be very angry at me so um uh, so i need to add that and um from my from my perspective i'm very happy that at leaf academy we've managed to create a space which uh, feels like home and uh and it's a place where I, uh, where I feel good and where I hope that our students feel good. And uh, we would like to invite you guys to uh, consider if this is a place where you may feel good, which you may call home. And if that's the case, uh, then we will be very happy. I don't want to say, Peter. I don't mm -hmm. want to say as a student, um, uh, I, can put, I agree with Pete. Um, Leaf Academy really is my second home and all its students and faculty are my second massive family. It's, it's, it's awesome because I know everyone by name and I, I have really, really close friendships which have developed here. Um, I experienced really, really nice and beautiful things at Leaf and I also experienced some really bad things which showed me page of life which was real which was realer than anything I could have ever imagined um, and I'm not going to list specifics but it was it's a really strong and it left a really strong and powerful footprint in me and LEAF has influenced me a lot and, and its people and it's an amazing environment and if you do consider to join us here then we'd love to have you Thank you very much, Ramsey. Ingrid, do you have something to say to our audience as well? Well, as Ramsey said, LEAF is really like a family, another family that you have, and even for international students. So I reassure all of the international students that are watching right now, don't worry, I traveled across the globe just to come here. So it's really, it's really not that hard as you think it is. Um, I mean, I, I have completely different cultural backgrounds and uh, everything basically uh, is different, but still I managed to happily live here for all of these months and uh, I have so many friends, uh, not just among the students, but also the teachers, so don't worry about that. It's really 
the second family you will have. Um, and also, uh, I don't want to ruin this build up, you know, so far, but I just want to say that one cool thing about each hall is that we we can we can decorate our hallway. <laughs> so yes, that that that's the bad thing that uh, will happen uh, once you come here because you can draw whatever you want. We have a huge portrait of our headmaster uh, in that hall. So yes, that's the best part. <laughs> super super. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, we were talking to Mr. Peter Retkowski, Head of Residential and EL Teacher in this session. Also Ingrid uh, Yang Zhang, who is a student of the year three, and uh, Ramzi, who is a student of the second year. Thank you very much. And uh, I, would I hope you uh, got every answer you wanted. If not, you can still contact us, obviously, via website uh, or through the Slido. I would like to also invite you uh, to our next LEAF Academy virtual campus, which will be next week, uh, 27th uh, of January, uh, again, four o'clock. Today was five uh, because uh, for some reason, but there will be four o'clock, uh, 4 p.m. next week. Again, the topic will be live after the LEAF. So we'll be talking to our alumni. They will be talking about their life after when they graduate and they finished the school. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching us. Thank you, my colleagues and students. It was uh, lovely to have you here tonight. I wish you a very nice evening and goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>